I'm going to talk about how to create a high converting WooCommerce store. So this is a talk that I gave at, at WordCamp KL last year. It's a pretty huge topic. I'll see what I can cover. Um, if you get too poor, bored, let me know and I'll, I'll skip through. But there's about 70-ish slides, so we'll try and cover what we can um, during this. So this is me. Um, I run a web design agency here and help out with the meetups and, and WordCamp and stuff like that, but you can catch me later. So we're going to go through a bit of a summary of, of what conversion rate optimization is, how to track um, customer behavior in WooCommerce, um, how to best sort of redesign your homepage or your landing pages, um, some options with search, checkout optimization, and some tips and tricks at the end if we have a little bit of time. So what is conversion rate optimization? Um, it's defined as the process of convincing more people on your website to take action. So this can happen through, and this action can be an email newsletter, it can be a free consultation, so asking for a quote or making for a purchase uh, in, you know, in the case of WooCommerce. Um, so the first thing we kind of start off is, is with discovery and, and who our target audience is. So these people are learning about our products um, and our services and they want to know what your brand is about. Second stage is those that are taking the next step uh, towards making a purchase. So those will be visiting your landing page. The third step is having people that will make the final purchase, well, final step, which is purchasing. So uh, these three steps, people like to do a lot of things. Um, they like to compare products, they'll shop around for things, uh, better prices, and they take their time to make final decisions. So if you do want to boost your sales and, and revenue, then optimizing your WooCommerce store for higher conversions helps the process move along further. So we'll look at a few um, tips that you can apply to your store. So first one is uh, tracking your customer behavior, right? So one of the best ways uh, to optimize your WooCommerce sales funnel and to target customers at all stages of the buying process is to track your customer behavior on something like Google Analytics or any other analytics packages. So you can enable visit uh, customer tracking to see how in how long logged in users are engaging with your store. You can set up custom dimensions in Google Analytics uh, to compare logged in user behavior versus guest visitor behavior as well. Um, you can sort of do things like goals and amount of page scroll and things like that. So that's another topic for another day, but um, you can track. Um, what everyone is doing on your site in, in Google Annex Analytics uh, quite easily. You can find out what traffic sources people are coming from. So if you're doing campaigns that are coming from Facebook, from Google, from Twitter, um, you can see uh, through that through Google Search Console and your traffic source in, in Google Analytics. You can track abandonment rates um, and pinpoint why customers aren't uh, completing your purchases. So you can do that through goals and funnels in Google Analytics and you can um, kind of see where they where they drop off through your purchase. So come to your homepage, they click on a product, they click add to cart and then you know you may never see them from again. So you can work out where in that stage that they'll fall off in the process and look at optimizing that way. Um, you can then follow up with a plugin uh, to complete the checkout afterwards. So if they've left an email address then you know that detail from them, and then you can um, follow up with an abandoned cart campaign or something. So you can use MailChimp or any other of those systems to set those funnels up. There's actually a couple of plugins at the end that I'll mention as well. Um, you can enable um, Google Analytics conversion tracking to help you make more informed decisions as well. So I'll run through a very basic demo here. So this was written in November. So the same time Google Site Kit came into beta at the same time, so I'd probably recommend that now, but otherwise there's this plugin, um, Google Analytics Dashboard for WP by Exact Metrics. Um, it's actually owned by Syed Belki from WP Beginner, Optin Monster, Monster Insights. They also are an all-in-one SEO, so they, um, they have a lot of uh, plugins in this area. So. Um, this one I like because it enables you to do um, some, some, some tracking that the basic ones won't allow you to do. So uh, you can basically sign up for Google Analytics, download and install it, authorize your plugin, 
Um, so authorize your plugin there, get your access code from Google Analytics, and then push that through. So once that's been authorized, you can select whatever uh, website that you're optimizing for. Um, and that will, so if you're using your Google Analytics account and you've got 10 accounts on there, then you can just choose from there. It should default to the domain name, um, but if it doesn't, then you can uh, find that and then click lock selection, which means any other admins coming in won't be able to, uh, to change that to another one. Um, the reason I do like this one is it has event tracking built in, which some of the other ones will not have unless you pay for the premium version. So you can track downloads, mail to, telephone, and outbound links. So those will be added under events in your uh, Google Analytics event tracking. If you are tracking affiliate links, so you're doing an outlink um, for third-party purchases, um, you can do that here with your affiliates rejects. So anything that has the out um, subfolder name on it will be tracked. Um, and you can do form submissions and, and track scrolling page depth as well. Uh, from this as well. And this is all in the free plugin. I don't believe they're going to merge all their, their analytics plugins, so I think they're going to remain separate. So this is a good one to have. There's nothing else really needed, um, I think, but um, most of those are, are all pretty good. The other option you can have is sort of excluding tracking for certain users. Uh, you may want to not track your administrator user or your shop manager user once they're logged in. Uh, and it has some uh, AMP um, accelerated mobile page tracking as well, if you want, but I don't really recommend that for e-commerce. Uh, so here, the next thing you need to do is going under uh, Google Analytics e-commerce settings. You can go through there and switch enable e-commerce on. Once that's switched on, um, you'll get the enabled enhanced reporting. So you can click that one on. Um, if you go through to view settings, you can then change your currency. So you would be changing that to SGD or whatever you're reconciling in. Uh, and that just links up your Google Analytics sales um, with your WooCommerce sales as well, so you can track it along that way. There's also this plugin that does WooCommerce Google Analytics uh, integration. So it does a couple more things um, than the other one. Um, it's worth looking into as well. Uh, so alongside, so it does enhanced uh, link attribution. Um, what else does it? Universal Analytics anonymizes your IP address, tracks your 404s and your purchase transactions as well. Will be all linked through here. Um, it actually tracks your add to cart events. So you can track how many people are clicking on your add to cart um, pages. So those are um, a bunch of good options to have. Um, and then they have the advanced e-commerce. So. Um, remove from cart events, um, product impressions from listing pages, um, product clicks from listing pages, detail views, and checkout process initiated. So all these are all separate events that you can log in um, with these two plugins. And that's kind of what you'll see it like. So if you have a functional store, you'll be able to go through Google Analytics and check out your revenue goals, how many transactions, uh, your conversion rate on those transactions, your average order value as well, um, and pull all that data through. So it will allow you to effectively optimize what you currently have based on the information that's coming through your store. Rather than just looking at the WooCommerce reports, you've made six purchases this day. You don't know necessarily uh, how many visits it's taken you to get to those six purchases. So if you're only getting a conversion rate of sort of one to 2%, and they're all coming from Facebook, whereas you're uh, getting 10% from Google Ads, then you obviously need to be optimizing your funnel uh, more towards your Google Ads clients than your Facebook ones. So it's with this type of data that you can um, make informed decisions. Can you go back to the paper where you showed the, which apps, which Yep, so there's this one. So this one will allow the additional integration And then there's also this one here, which is Google Analytics Dashboard, GADWP. This will actually install a dashboard uh, in the back end for you, so you can have some very basic analytics um, to look through. Where are we now? All right, 
so that's kind of getting the information from your store, but now you need to work out how to optimize it uh, to, to increase those conversions. So it's important to consider your customer's pain points um, when this comes across. It's also important to consider the pain points experienced d during the buying process as well. So you need to convince your customers that the product is the solution that they, um, they are looking after, looking for, and it's really easy to purchase as well. So a few ideas and tips for this is using large, bold imagery to grab your visitor's attention uh, and to make sure those images are optimized, right? So once you come to a website, if you have you know, 50 products on your site, you don't want those all to be huge images that are you know, 500 to um, 500 kilobytes to a megabyte size image because it's just going to take way too long for that to actually download, especially on mobile devices and things. So you want to make sure that they're optimized. Uh, your product images are, are square. They're in a white background. They're all pretty much uh, the same size. I have a client, a wine client at the moment, and they have bottle sizes that are landscape. They have bottle sizes that are portrait and square ones. So it's all a bit of a mishmash. Uh, so making sure that your products are all the similar size uh, across your site is good as well. And then making sure that you have alt tags around those as well. So um, once you upload the image, you can set the title, the caption, the description, and the alt tag. Um, alt tag is important for mainly for screen readers. So if blind users are using the site, it will read out the description of the image. But it's used loosely for SEO as well. So um, an alt image should, an alt tag for an image should display um, a plain English version of what's on the on the picture. So if it's a guy holding a glass of wine, you know your description of the image and your alt tag would be, you know, uh, man holding glass of wine. And if you wanted to add some SEO in that, you could link your product name, you know, of of what brand wine. Um, always make sure that you have your logo on the site. Um, I went and had a client meeting with a service-based business recently, a shipping company. They didn't have their logo anywhere on their site. Um, it's very strange. They didn't really even have the name of the company on it either, uh, the domain name linked. But, you know, basic things like this, um, you'd be surprised at what some people do. So, um, and making sure, so color is probably another huge topic that could be covered um, in a talk its own, but making sure that you're using contrasting colors um, to differentiate your brand versus uh, buy, uh, buy buttons as well to make sure that they're easy to, to see and to stand out so they draw attention to them. Uh, and then social proof as well. So these could be social proof in terms of the uh, you as a company having an Instagram following, having blog posts, having testimonials, having Google reviews, um, FOMO notifications, and things like that. So there's a whole um, area around social proof. I'll go through a couple of examples later as well. Um, let me see if I can load this one up. Oops. We've got a couple of examples. All right, is this going to link out? All right. All right, so this website, um, I've got a couple of comments on it. So it's channeling, um, I didn't take screenshots, yeah. Channeling their like, sort of fun and energy with bright colors. Um, they've done a great job with their photography as well. They've got large photos across their homepage. Where's my mouse? Okay. Yep, large bright colors across their homepage. It fits in with their brand. Uh, you can see they've got a little bit of FOMO and a little bit of sort of social uh, proof here as well. Uh, so you can engage with them. Um, so they've done a great job with their photography and big photos and things. Um, there's another one here, Bohemian Traders. Um, so this is really good for like a clothing website. So as you go across the site, um, you can see that um, really easy to get in touch with them. So either by phone number, uh, you can choose their currencies, sign in, view cart. Um, and as you go here, you know, they have all their benefits straight away um, before you actually get to their product. So there's a big sale going on now. I don't know about the flashing banner. That doesn't really do much for me, but uh, I don't even know where my mouse is. But 
in terms of images, they're, you know, they're all pretty much uh, from the same shoot, obviously. Um, they're all sized correctly, you know, really um, just a good little one. Um, you know, nothing too much, but you can see it's, it's definitely on brand for what they want to. Um, they don't have a huge slider showing a hundred different images uh, across the side as well. So just focused on one thing. Uh, this is a shoe company, Mojave's. Um, you may have seen their Facebook and Instagram ads. I know I've seen them for, for a long time. Um, so their branding goes across this. Where the hell is this going? Yeah, so they have a listing of their products, a couple of different examples of uh, their range of products, a pop-up that came in too early from my experience. Um, that's quite nice in terms of explaining. I mean, they've only got one product and then variations on that one product. But if you are looking at selling that, then it's a good kind of experience to show um, how it's made. They've got a little bit of um, uh, probably an MP4, so video in the background there. And then I think that's their Instagram channel as well. So The other one, a couple of other examples, so Grove made, they sell um, computer accessories, desk accessories and things. Um, the sort of lifestyle shots on their products. Uh, sea Folly is a good one, it's a swimwear brand, but um, so it's very consistent in terms of uh, displaying their products and their images uh, across the site, really simple. Um, I modeled uh, a Brazilian swim, two Brazilian swimwear brands kind of similar to this one in the last year or so. Um, it may seem simple, but make your site searchable. I had a client recently that their search was broken on their site. It just returned like an error message. Um, so they couldn't use it internally for their WordPress admin or externally. Um, but so site search as well as making sure that it's uh, accessible via search engines as well to make sure that it's accessible via Google. So. Um, you need to take it one step further and make sure that through keyword search and navigation that people can find your products. Um, you may categorize them one way, but it may not always be the, the right categorization for people um, that are looking for products as well. So you'll find that out through your analytics and where people are, uh, are falling off. But there may be a couple of different categories um, to store the same product in. If you're looking at someone like Amazon, you may have the one product in about 100 different categories, and some of them will be similar categories, but you may be able to browse them through different hierarchies um, and breadcrumbs as well. So 30% of users will use an internal search when they land on an e-commerce website, so make sure that it's really easy to find. It's at the top of the website and that it returns results. Uh, if it doesn't return results, then return some type of related content to that as well. Uh, and then you can showcase what you have on offer as well. Uh, and make search available within product pages as well. Uh, this can be a little bit more complicated, but it's a good idea to have autocomplete and autocorrect on as well to make um, suggestions, especially in terms of spelling. If you're talking about American products versus English products and things, some of the variations of those are not always kept across. So if you are selling to an international audience or an, an audience that may be unsure of sort of their spelling, then you look at sort of tagging those products with both of those spellings. And if people are making spelling mistakes, so it's a, uh, it's a product that is not generic, um, returning some type of result for a similar uh, product as well. So you can do this with Search Console. So Search Console will allow you to see how people have got to your website from Google. Um, so you can link this in, uh, there's a few plugins. Google Site Kit will do it in about two to three steps for you. It'll also do analytics, but won't do the additional tracking for you. Um, so it will allow you to see what people are searching for. So you may not have the product on your website, but people are still searching for it and coming through to you. So it may be time to either create content around that keyword. So you can do that through blogging, um, 
or if you're getting you know, 10% of your traffic around one to two products, then you can look at creating additional channels of content around that. So blogging, video, and all sorts of things to make sure that additional content or additional people would be coming through your site, not just to one product page, but around, um, around that content. And then following design patterns is important as well. Um, Here's one example here. So designing a shop layout. So users expect to find the site search in the top right hand corner. And then, um, uh, so Reebok gets this right, but why isn't it loading? Yep. So as you come in, you know, pretty standard, right? Logo on the left. Um, top navigation, they've got their two or three different main categories there. So you're either shopping women's, men's, kids or sale. Uh, and they've got the search wherever my mouse may be. That way. There we go. And a search through there as well, right? So it's pretty easy to find. You can find your cart. It's empty at the moment. Um, but really consistent. Um, so it's putting through the men's and women's apparel. Obviously, two new products that they're focusing on from there as well. Um, these are their individual um, pages as well. So obviously, they have a budget to shoot their own images and things, so their own products. Um, but it, it stays clear um, with their brand. Not that one. Not that one either. That one. Uh, my client, actually... <laughs> They do get it right now, I actually fixed it, but at this point in time, it was a horrible, horrible website. They had about 2,000 products and about 50 of them had photos. Their internal search didn't work. Their products were categorized into wine, and that was basically it. Wine, spirits, liqueur, but no variations on those, so no red wine, no variety, um, no country, no region. So it took us, what is it now, about four months to get all that tagging right. Um, so it is a big job to kind of get right, especially if you have a lot of products, but it makes sense to, to have all this in place. Uh, we then can kind of move on to checkout optimization. So making sure that when people are coming to the site that they can actually uh, pay for your items. So there's a study um, that I found recently around uh, cart abandonment rates around 60 to 80%. So the benefits can be huge. So the same study shows that an e-commerce site can gain a whopping sort of 35% increase in conversion rate um, to make sure that your checkout experience uh, can be a good one. Um, one, one example I made for my wine store just recently um, borrowed from Amazon. And so once you go to Amazon and you add something to your cart, there's two choices that you can make. Either sort of go back in your browser or close your browser or make a purchase. You, there's no navigation listed anywhere. There's no footer. You can't really click on anything else. The only few things you can do are make a purchase or go back in your browser. So giving people too many choices, um, especially at this point in time when you're expecting a purchase, uh, is a bad thing. So once you can get them sort of funneled down from all your products, their cart experience should essentially be confirming what's in their cart, and then their checkout experience should be just adding address and making payment and you know, and nothing else from there. So you know that they'll never kind of click off that page because you've never given the option to. Um, you can also look at reducing the number of fields in your checkout pages as well. I know WooCommerce by default adds a company name, it adds an order notes thing at the bottom as well. So um, it adds address layer one, address two, city, country, uh, and postcode as well. So if you're just looking at shipping in Singapore and billing in Singapore, then obviously you don't need city and you don't need um, state. So you can just go down address one, address two, postcode, and that's all you need, right? So that's a whole bunch of fields that you've skipped out. You can also look at compressing first name and last name just into one field as well. Sometimes that can be confusing for users of different nationalities where first name and, and last name is kind of backwards well. So that's something you can kind of look through as well through your store. Um, but one quarter of cart abandonment it happens uh, through the checkout page. Kind of seems simple, but make sure all your costs 
uh, are given up front. Sometimes this can be hard depending on your shipping provider. So you may be able to give a, an estimate of shipping to certain countries. You may want to tie in with someone like DHL that can provide you live shipping based on weights and based on heights and things like that on your site. But um, there's an example later on that if you don't have a specific shipping to a country, then you can off, just give them a message and says, look, we don't ship to Japan right now, but send us a message and then you, we'll get back to you with a specific charge so they can still go through that checkout process and then you can bill them for the shipping later. So they shouldn't really have to go wandering wherever to find your shipping rates. You should be able to give them to them uh, up front as well. So that may mean once you come to the website, you have their shipping rate up top, so $100. Anything over $100 is shipping is free, and then everything under you know, is charged at $10 or, or something. There's also an optimization that you can make in WooCommerce to, uh, by default, it will show you the free shipping option as well as the paid shipping option, even if they qualify for the free shipping option. So you wanna make sure that you can uh, remove the paid option if they qualify for, for the free shipping. And then uh, studies have showed about 35% of um, shoppers abandon their cart when you ask them to sign up for an account. So you can improve that by using APIs like Google and Facebook to make sure it's just a one or two click. But is it really important for you to have that information from the user or do you just want the purchase and you can follow up later in a, in a follow up campaign and say, hey, I noticed you didn't create an account at this time if you create an account, we'll give you a coupon for $10 or something like that, right? So you still get their information, but you make sure you get the purchase first. And then, yeah, so removing distractions at checkout, which I mentioned before. So you don't want to give them uh, any other options. So you can remove your header, you remove your footer, and the only option that they have is to pay. So there's a couple of options here enable uh, that will allow you to do um, some checkout customizations here. There's a pre, uh, free and a pro version, but the, uh, the free version will do enough for you for the most part. Um, so once that's installed, you can go to here to checkout form and it will allow you to customize um, your form. So these are the default ones and you can see whether or not they're required or not. So for Singapore, if you're just shipping to Singapore, you can click on this one and disable it. So there's a just disable down here. So phone number, is it necessarily needed? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, company name, you probably don't need. City, uh, billing state. And postcode, I'd probably change that um, from just remove the zip because it's not really relevant unless we're shipping in the US. So you can also add new fields as well. So if you wanted to capture an NRIC number, which I know we're not supposed to do anymore, uh, you can do that through that. Um, and you can validate that against some very basic rules as well. So if you do want some of those fields to be required or not required, um, it can be done there as well. And if you wanted to go here under the additional fields and remove the order notes, that can be done as well. Uh, and same as shipping and billing fields, so you can uh, reset all those. If you get into trouble, you can just click reset uh, and those will restore all those. So hopefully a few kind of tips and tricks here to kind of end up um, and finish up here. There's a plugin that Henry um, recommended to me a little while ago. So Henry's another uh, organizer here. It's a plugin called Youth Questions and Answers. They have a whole bunch of plugins. Uh, there's a free one and a paid one, but it allows customers to ask questions on product pages. Um, once you get that question, they can respond to that directly on the page. So it's kind of like the, the Amazon one where you can go and ask questions and you can either answer it as an admin or other users can answer it as well. Does this product do this? Does this product do that? Um, the free version should probably do enough um, for you to get tested, um, tested or out anyway. So um, you can see them all here. So these are all ones that have been added. So questions and answers, they're all added in here and then on the front end is kind of the default what it looks like. So you have your three tabs, uh, default tabs there. And then, you know, do I have to purchase an upgrade? And then it's been asked, uh, been answered. So you can then look at using this information to create FAQ pages, blog posts, and things like that to sort of further build out your content on your site. It's a plugin um, built by WP Developer. Um, 
There's a free and a pro version of this as well, and this helps with social proof uh, across the site. So social proof and sort of FOMO, so that refers to sort of the fear of missing out. And so if you go on a site and you've seen, oh, Jim has bought six bottles of wine from California 15 hours ago, um, these ones will actually show real data, not just kind of made up data. So it links in directly with WooCommerce and will show that information. So. That's a free one. Uh, there's a couple of different styling options in the free version, but there's more integrations in the pro. Uh, but it should be enough to kind of get you started. There's a few other, I mean, there's a lot of other solutions out there, but this is a nice one uh, to get you started. So I think I've got a little, yeah. So there's a couple of different styles down there. So it'll tell you um, that someone has purchased this from XYZ and give you a photo of the product and things as well. So I think the pro, the pro version will remove the um, the branding and some of the other styles and things, but uh, it's a good pro plugin to have. There's another one called Customer Reviews. This one's a free plugin as well from the repository. There's a link down there. So after you've shipped the product to the user, usually you'll follow up with an anti or with a follow up campaign. This can happen uh, in your Mailchimp or Active Campaign or whatever email solution you're using, but this is a nice basic one that just goes straight through from WooCommerce. So it has all the data from WooCommerce. It tells you what product that you've purchased. The review will go to that specific purchase um, uh, plugin review page uh, and includes voting on reviews as well. So was this helpful? So by default, it kind of looks like this, right? So 30 days after the, the product or seven days after the product, Thanks for shopping with us. You know, would you like to review this? Yes or no. If you've purchased multiple products, it will actually list all the multiple products in one email. So you won't have to go, you know, review product one, review two. You can quickly go through here, uh, select all this, uh, and then send that across. So that's a good little one um, to, to try using out of the box. If you don't have anything, uh, it's a good one to start with. And mentioned before, the no shipping message. So this is a free plugin as well. If you uh, are looking at sort of selling things overseas, but you don't have specific rates for certain countries, so you might just have Asia Pacific countries organized in your WooCommerce uh, shipping system, and you, someone comes to you from, from Australia, and you're like, oh, I don't really know. Usually, it would just say there's no shipping available. And what this plugin does is it allows you to, I don't know if you can read that, but so if you're looking at shipping to Australia, it basically says there's no shipping method available, so they can't make a purchase. So this one basically says, okay, you know, you can ship, just contact us, and it just helps it move that sale along a little bit further. You still can't make the purchase, um, but it'll allow you to sort of get in contact with them rather than losing them completely. WooCommerce by default is free. Uh, it offers upsells and cross-sells. So if you have related products, um, you can move all that stuff along. If you are looking at sort of doing external products, so if you have an Amazon affiliate or other affiliate marketing, you can sell and list all those products on your WooCommerce store and then just put in external links. The links will obviously go to their purchase, but it can kind of be listed in your, in your system as well. So they'll get an add to cart or I click to purchase and it will go to Amazon and they can make that payment from there. Um, it'll allow you to do customized emails as well, uh, just to match your branding. Nothing terribly fantastic out of the box, but uh, just to match your branding. The small bonus here of a few things um, to improve conversions. So some things that can work uh, if they're done properly is messenger bots. So you can use Facebook messenger bots on something like uh, something fuel, I'm trying to remember the name of it, but um, I use ManyChat. So you can develop your Facebook bots using ManyChat. And there's a talk that I gave a year or two ago. Channel bot, I think, channel flow. There's also, uh, so those are messenger bots and those will exist even if there's nobody around. So you can program them to, to list certain FAQ information, uh, contact details and things like that. 
The other bots you'll be looking at talk to, t a w k dot t o or drift dot com. Those are ones that you have to man yourself. So if someone asks you a question, you kind of have to be there to answer, or it'll pop up on your phone. So there's a few of those as well. So um, it's good to kind of be around. Uh, you don't have to obviously be accessible to everyone all the time, but uh, there's a lot of inf uh, studies that are showing that uh, people really like to get in touch with you and ask ask questions. So if you can give them another opportunity to do that, then that's a good thing. So by programming a bot, it relieves you of that duty. Um, doing exit intents pop-ups. So what that means is that if your browser uh, mouse moves to the top left or the top right to, to close out of that window, then you can say, hey, wait a minute, I know you're about to close, but I'll give you a $10 discount or join my newsletter, email newsletter uh, to get in contact with us or something like that. Um, you can use uh, urgency and scarcity as well to make sure that uh, people are looking at a product. So you can use a time limit. So say, uh, a product's on sale for a certain amount of time. You can look at bringing in counters. Uh, so a countdown from five hours to two hours or something like that. Uh, there's a plugin here. Uh, let me just click on this one for you. Uh, called the final countdown. A finale it's called now. But, um, but you can look at this one. Um, it'll basically just say, look, this product, there's 10, ver there's 10, uh, there's 10 left at this cost uh, and it goes for two days, three days, then you can increase the, the price of that. So you can use that to, um, for urgency and scarcity, make sure that it's real. Don't just kind of fake it for the, for the sake of marketing and sales, but um, do this properly. Otherwise people will find out uh, and that's no good. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Where is... Uh, web design, so making sure that you can, uh, there's search, there's add to cart, checkout is distraction free. Uh, actually choosing your products and making sure that you're not just selling a product that everybody else is selling as well. So uh, finding a niche and finding products within that niche and then you can obviously be the uh, authority on those products. Testimonials and reviews and making sure that there's some type of free shipping available uh, and display that up front. A couple of things you can do to improve conversions, so making sure that your photos are well optimized, you have alt tags, file names uh, based on the product as well and keywords. Adding in some FAQs, uh, you're going to get queries from different clients along the way. So just to make sure that you are covering that with content. Making sure that you have a business address that's accessible. Uh, you can find that as well so that you're a real company. And then doing basic things like making sure that any email that goes out to them is using your brand colors, not the default WooCommerce purple. It has your logo in it. Um, very basic things like that. Um, making sure that it's as fast as possible so you can check that out with things like GT metrics or page speed insights, uh, optimizing your images and something like Imageify or um, I always forget the name of the other one, Smush, um, or putting them through tiny PNG just to optimize them as much as possible. Don't upload a 5,000 pixel image to the site. Um, WooCommerce will uh, do some compression on that but make sure that you're sort of doing as much as you can offline before you can put it uh, onto your store. Uh, payments, so PayPal and Stripe um, are probably my two best options there uh, for credit card payments. And then making sure that um, you have some social proof across the site as well. So single sign on with Facebook or Instagram and share buttons. Um, I think I put this because uh, I think, yeah, Google Pay was coming to Stripe in November, so I think that's why I added that one, but it's been and gone now, so. Uh, a couple other things, add your phone number to your header, make it as easy as possible for people to get in touch with you, even if that's just a WhatsApp business number. You can go to uh, Circles Live, get a free number, it gives you one gigabyte of data, connect that up, 
um, and just have something that's available. You may not want to give your own mobile number out, but if you leave that on a phone connected in the office or an old phone or something, then that's at least some way that people get in, in touch with you. Uh, show sh standard shipping costs on every page as well. They should be as free as you can make them. Um, you can obviously inflate the prices of your, of your products and then give free shipping. Um, you know, a lot of people kind of do it the opposite way as well. So you'll give the book away for free and then you'll charge them $20 for shipping. It's essentially the same thing, no matter how you sort of weigh it up. But let people know the cost. There's nothing worse than going to the final page of a checkout and finding out that it's $200 to get it shipped from the US. Um, if you can, give that information up front. Uh, if you can as well, make sure the estimated delivery date is visible uh, and make that as quick as possible as well. That can just be an estimated look. We'll ship out on the next three to five days. And that could just be applied across either every page or applied across your, your cart and your checkout pages. So people are going to understand that it's not going to be shipped to them tomorrow necessarily, uh, but making sure that you give people inf as much information about that as possible. Right, a couple more slides. Uh, make key information accessible in your footer as much as possible. Uh, so that can be your additional uh, categories and things like that. Uh, I got one last example. So, oh, oh, too early to be hitting me up with this, mate. All right, scroll, scroll, scroll. So, pretty standard footer, right? Sign up to your email, uh, sign up to your email newsletter. They'll tell you, okay, they'll keep you posted on new products and great offers. So, pretty generic messaging there. I think you should optimize that a little bit better. Um, but you know, your help information, your legal information, more about the company, and then more to sort of get in touch with them as well. So pretty standard. I'd probably look at having um, some categories across here, but what they've done here is they have their main navigation across the site. So it's not as important uh, to continue navigation down the bottom because it's gonna follow you everywhere you are. Uh, down the bottom, you can see that they're a real company. They have a real address. Um, it's SSL, I mean, you can see that already, but I don't know what these people are, but uh, and then you can change your country, which is obviously just specific for them and uh, incentivize people to join your email newsletter. So why would they join it? What's the point of joining another newsletter? We get so many as it is. So uh, make sure that you give them some value once they join your email newsletter. Set up some type of basic welcome. And don't make a pop-up the first thing they see when they go into your store. There should be one or two pages into your site, or two or three pages into your site before they get an opt-in request, or at least 90% down a page. Um, you don't want to hit them up sub subscribe when they don't even know who you are. So make sure that you've convinced them of the, your value and then you can ask them to, to opt in. What kind of do you recommend? Uh, so I'd like, so, so newsletter is one thing, but I really like marketing automation to be built into it as well. So you can set up a basic welcome sequence or welcome funnel. MailChimp will do it, not on its free plan anymore. It was free, then it wasn't, then it was, then it's not anymore. Something like MailerLite, M-A-I-L-E-R space L-I-T-E. That will allow you to set up a very basic funnel. So on the first day, they receive a welcome email. On the second day, they receive, you know, this is more about my company. The third day, fourth day, you can set up all those very basic funnels. Uh, and then you can do newsletters and things through it as well. The tools for building the newsletters are not as good as something like MailChimp. Uh, but it sort of has the, the automation side into it, which I think is important when you're looking at incentivizing people and creating that customer journey. Because it's not just one touch point and, of an email newsletter, which is generic. So you want to make sure that you can get that customer data into that system as well.
But MailChimp works fine. It just depends on what you want to do with it. And that's it, I think. That's the 80 slides. Questions? No questions? <laughs> Optimize for mobile. Um, make things as quick as possible. So um, your experience is going to be very different on mobile. Um, if you have 20, page, 20 products on your home page, I don't think that's beneficial to a mobile user. You may want to include some slides um, to make sure it's like a, a shorter experience so people don't have to scroll so far. But by making it a slide, you want to make sure that you're kind of showing a little bit. Uh, I've got a quick example uh, of one. All right, let's see if I can. Oh, where's my tools? All right. So if we're looking down, uh, that's their kind of experience there. But as you come down here, they've, they've got a pop-up that comes in that says, okay, they're all our dates from that. That's our prices. Uh, simplified the experience from there. Um, oh yeah, so from their destination slider. So typically what you'd have is you'd have 10 destinations just one after another. So from here, I think it's a good experience that you're giving people a glimpse that there is more content across here. And then that user can just scroll across that way. So that is kind of important because there's more text to go with it. But if you're just showing kind of images, um, then I think that experience kind of works uh, for the mobile. So making sure there's not too much the same with if you're having testimonials. So you might have 10 testimonials across your homepage. Just kind of add a scroller um, on the mobile. So just make it as simple as possible. If you can, add tabs for different content as well. So it may require a little bit of additional development for mobile. But try and make it as easy as it can for people to find your product and, and make a sale or make a purchase. These ones have a whole new, uh, they have a whole experience that you go through. Um, to make their booking, it's uh, an Ajax thing. It basically asks you a whole bunch of questions. So we've built something similar to this um, for other clients as well. So they'll go through a questionnaire and answer questions based on that, and then it will pick their product for them. Um, so that's a good experience if you're just selling customized one or two products. But if you're a traditional store, then you just need to make sure that your menu and your navigation system is really easy uh, for people to use. Yeah, so there's GT Metrics, uh, there's Pingdom. Pingdom. Yep, tools.pingdom.com. Uh, the other one is Google Page Speed Insights. So if you're using SiteKit to integrate into your site, uh, that will do analytics, it'll do Search Console, and it'll do Page Speed Insights for you as well, all in like four clicks. So there's a talk that. Who gave the talk last time? SiteKit. Robbie gave a talk last month, so that's up on engineers.sg, so you can check that out. Okay. And I think the slides are up there, maybe. Engineers.sg. Engineers you can find it up there. Cool. Otherwise, catch me later. I'll, I'll pass across to, to Edmund now, who's going to talk to you about the new WordPress uh, 